Today we are doing the first part in a three-part series on how to activate, maintain, and bake your gluten sourdough cultures. Here at Cultures for Health, we offer three gluten sourdough cultures. Our San Fran, our whole wheat, and our rye. To know which culture to choose, check out our comparison video. But stick around here to learn how to activate. That's the most important step to getting your sourdough starter off the ground. Sourdough starter is absolutely great because there's so many things you can do with it besides just baking bread and it's a great skill to learn. And the best part is, is if you maintain it and activate it the way that we showed you, it'll last forever. That's the perks of having an heirloom culture such as sourdough. Let's get activating. So now we're gonna do the first step in our activation process. What you're gonna need is a spatula or something to stir with a tablespoon, your flour, your water, a jar, and of course, your packets and your lid. So let's do it. I'm gonna start by adding my packet to my jar first. I like to give my packet a little bit of a shake just to make sure that all of the powder settles down to the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and just tear it open. So we're gonna add our packet to our jar. I like to give it a little wiggle to make sure that all the powder comes out. And then that is discard. And then we're going to add one tablespoon of flour and one tablespoon of water to our dried starter powder here. So you can use your little spatula. That's why I like to use little flat spatulas because it's got a nice little edge that you can level off with if you'd like. We're just gonna do a tablespoon of flour and a tablespoon of water. And then mix that up. Now don't be afraid if this mixture looks a little bit dry. It may look a little dry, that's okay. And if it looks a little wet, that's okay too. As you add more feeds and you get more consistent with the amount and quantity of flour and water that you're adding, it should level out to a nice thickness. So that is the first step to making our gluten sourdough starters. Super simple, just add your packet in with your flour and your water and give it a nice little stir till it's all mixed. You're then going to cover this and let it sit for 12 to 24 hours. We're going to do that. Right here, nice little topper. We like to double wrap our rubber bands just to be safe, make sure they're good and tight, and that's ready to go. Now that it's been 12 to 24 hours, we're ready to feed our sourdough starter. Let's take a look at how it's going. So, right off the bat, it's obviously still pretty small, right, because we just did our first tablespoon feed. Like I said, it could be a little liquidy, it could be a little firmer, it just depends on the moisture of your flour and the moisture of your air. So ours came out a little bit firmer and it dried out a little bit on top, but that's not a big deal. Um, it'll still work great and as we feed it, all of that will hydrate. You may be able to start seeing some bubble activity, but not likely. Let's go ahead and give it a feed. So our first feed next is going to be two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. I just like to level it off. We're gonna do one, two. And then two of water. And we'll give that a nice stir. The good thing about sourdough is you can't really over mix because the incorporation of all the air is helping the yeast. So we don't have to worry about mixing our sourdough starter too much. So make sure that you're giving it a good mix to get all of the flour hydrated and nice and working. And scrape the sides of your jar. This will help prevent things like molds and bad bugs being attracted to your sourdough starter. It will also help you see the rise and fall level of your starter once it becomes active and bubbly. So that's that step. We're gonna go ahead and cover it up and we'll let it go for another 12 to 24 hours before our next feed. It's been 24 hours and we're ready for our next feed. Let's take a look. So you can see that we're starting to see maybe a little bit of bubble activity. Sometimes it's hard to tell if that's from stirring a stiff starter 
or if that's bubbles formed by your yeast. If you're not sure, be patient. You'll definitely be able to tell in a few more feeds when your starter is a little more active. But I can definitely tell that there's a little bit of activity going in this one, so we're gonna go ahead and give it its next feed. You're going to feed your starter a quarter cup of flour and two tablespoons of water. So let's do that. To level quarter cup, and then two tablespoons of water. Now, of course, you can always adjust your water based on how thick you like our sa your sourdough starter. But we like ours a little thicker, so we do two tablespoons. And just give it a good stir. Remember, you can't over stir your starter, right? All of the incorporation of air is good for the yeast and the microbiome in your starter. Once you're done mixing your starter, you're gonna let it sit for another 24 hours. <laughs> At this point, it's been another 24 hours and we're ready to do another feed on our sourdough starter. So let's take a look. The time. So you can see on the side of our jar that we're starting to see a little bit more activity in our starter. This is around the time that you will start to see some activity. Remember some bubbles we'll see from stirring and the stiffness of our starter if you like a really thick starter, but otherwise some of these bubbles should be the signs that your sourdough starter is starting to be active. So let's give it a feed. So we're gonna do half cup of flour and a quarter cup of water. So I'm gonna do that. Just add it into my jar here. You can always go up a size in jar at this point too if you'd like to, but we usually do that at the next step. Now we're gonna do our quarter cup of water. and stir. Remember, you can't over stir because all of the air that you're incorporating is good for your yeasts. Remember, when you're stirring to scrape down all the sides and the bottom to remove any excess dry flour. Your starter is fed again, so we can go ahead and let this sit for another 24 hours. So it's been 24 hours since our last feed. We fed a half cup in our last feed. Our sourdough starter is now the size that we want it to be in order to maintain it. So we're gonna start discarding a half cup and feeding a half cup regularly. This next few cycles, you should do that until you see your starter active. You can tell your starter is active when you're seeing bubbles in the sides and you see that double in volume. There's a bunch of other ways, but that's the easiest way to do it inside the jar. So we're gonna go ahead and discard and feed this one, and we'll do that a few times until we feel like it's active enough to move on to the maintain step. Let's take a look. So you can see this one has grown in size a little bit. It's hard to tell, but there's definitely some bubbles in on the sides, and when I turn it, I can start to see it pull away a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and discard and feed. We're gonna go ahead and pull some of the starter out of our jar to discard the half cup and feed a fresh half cup. Remember to save your discard because we have a bunch of great recipes on the website for sourdough discard. And it's all healthy starter with great microbes in it, so definitely worth saving. So we're gonna take out a half cup. Scrape it down, scrape the extras back into the jar there. And this half cup will go in a jar and in our fridge for safekeeping. Now that we've discarded a half cup, we're gonna go ahead and feed with a half cup and a quarter cup. This is gonna be your regular feed until your starter is activated, happy, and ready to go. Let's do it. And 
then we're just gonna go ahead and stir that all together. At this point, you can choose to use a larger jar if you're worried about spilling or kicking up flour or anything like that, but this jar will hold. If your starter is really active, it may explode out the top, but for these first few activation steps, it should be okay. And remember to scrape down the side of your jar because that'll help starter from drying on there, potentially growing mold or attracting bugs or anything of that nature. So to the best of your ability, scrape down the side of your jar. That also just helps stay clean. Return your coffee filter to your starter and let it sit for 24 hours. We have been discarding and feeding our starter for a couple days and we're ready to show you what an active starter looks like. So let's pop the top and take a look. So, off the bat, you can see great bubbles, right? So we started with our half cup, which filled to about here. It has doubled since our last feed, which means that our sourdough starter is now active and ready for the maintenance stage. Remember to keep feeding and discarding until you get starter looking like this. Once your starter looks like this, you're ready to maintain. And that's it. With a little flour, water, and Coulter's for Health sourdough starter, you can be on your way to making a happy, healthy sourdough for all the bread needs you could possibly think of. The possibilities of what you can make with sourdough starter are endless, so make sure you stick around for a part two of how to maintain your starter, both in the fridge and out at room temperature. And don't forget about part three where we show you how to bake. There will be recipes linked below on how to use your sourdough starter and don't forget to share your recipes with us. We love watching you guys learn, eat, and share. So share with us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Happy fermenting.